going on falcon fan this is your boy ricundo come back at you with another video so today guys i like to come on and talk about after a day after the game come and talk about the good things that happen the bad things happen some things they need to prove in and then we're going to go talk about you know just the process in general about this falcon team this new era and what things look like and how we need to just sit back relax and 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 trust the process so guys, you have not already, go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that notification bell so you know that I drop another video. Please hit the like button so I know you guys out here I talk about. Then please share my video throughout the YouTube universe so more people can come in and hear me talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So like guys, you know the Atlanta Falcons actually stayed out on the West Coast this week because they got a game against the Seattle Seahawks. Again, get ready, getting ready for those guys. Um, hope we can come back and you know be on a happy note this coming Sunday. But before we get into that, let's recap and finalize week two of the season against the Los Angeles Rams. Some of the good things that happened and some of the bad things that happened. First of all, I want to say that the Atlanta Falcons did make a roster move today. They brought um a dual Anderson and add him to the active 53 man roster. No need for corresponding moves because we only had 52 because they put. Um, Damon Williams on the on the IR. So um, bringing up Abdul Anderson, we know that he actually had about 11 to 12 snaps yesterday. Um, looked pretty good, and, you know, in some of his, his you know few plays that he had. But they brought him up to the active roster, so hopefully they can utilize him more um, this weekend against the Seattle Seahawks. But now the Falcons is back at 53 man roster, and of course, you know, we still have now five guys on the IR. Um, some of those guys. Could be back in a couple of weeks now because we started, we started them off in the beginning of the season. So, um, we we're looking, we might can't wait to see Isaiah Oliver get back out there with 100%. See Deion Jones get back out there 100%. Um, both of those guys could definitely be something, somebody that could definitely help us contribute to this team moving forward. So, guys, like I said, we we'll talk about it. the um, Ram games, just talk about the good things and the bad things. Uh, first of all, this is it. We won't talk about the Rams anymore after today. Uh, we need to go ahead and move on. We got, what, 15 games left to play. Yes, we are 0-2. We are what the record says we are. Um, we're one of, I think, like six teams that's 0-2. So we got to try to get on the winning, you know, to get the winning winning track this this week hopefully but we'll just have to see how that pans out for this team but let's get to some of the good things and the bad things that we saw um from my perspective of what i saw in the game yesterday the good thing the first good thing i'm gonna say is you know just the fight the fight in this team um i think all of us assumed that this game was over you know going into the you know to the third quarter these guys was down twenty eight to three. Everybody had their little jokes and everything. Um, the big interception by um, Michael Walker put us up. You know, um, it was ten points. We was down thirty one to ten, and then the tables turned. These guys kept fighting, made plays that need to make. So I like to fight. I like that in in this in this team um, to let these guys know that. Any team that we play that we're not just going to lay down, we're going to fight to the end. It's sort of like that competition spirit that they had in, in the, you know, doing training camp. And we looked at those guys at training camp going back and forth, competing when they to get beat. They don't they just get up, go to the next play. That's the mentality you have to have because it is 60-minute game. And I think that's how they got they, these guys treated it yesterday. Maybe the Rams let up a little bit. We don't care, but at the same time, these guys killed the fight. And like I said, with two minutes left in the game, we was down by six points at their 20-yard line. So we had a chance to actually come away with the win after how it looked it so bleak for us. So the fight in these guys, that's the first positive I'm going to take away from this game this week. Um, the second positive is it's just the fact the young guys, right? I want to give a shout out to this young. It's already a young team, um, in this league anyway. But the young guys have made plays in this game, and you have to start to look at the way these young guys are playing because it's good for the future. It's good for us to start looking at it, you know, from a good standpoint how this thing is going to look. All right, Drake London still looking good. Continue his his 
his um good play from week one to week two. Hopefully he can continue that. Uh, we like to see. He just looked like a um, a pro. Th- know it's a lot of things he still need to learn. Um, but right now, he just looked calm. He looked like he's in control when he's coming out his route. He's making all the plays that he need to make. So I'm really impressed with Drake London. Definitely. Um, the big play by Troy Anderson, right? Gets out, get his opportunity. Not playing a whole lot. He did play a little bit more in defense yesterday, but not playing a whole lot. Um on defense but like we always say special teams is very important and making that big play on special teams um that block punt was huge for us the the momentum swing and lorenzo carter getting that scoop and score so Troy anderson is definitely somebody that's definitely probably earned some more playing time i would love to see Troy anderson coming off you know doing that blitz because he's like a missile coming out he plays with rage out of control with that speed and that size um i would love to see him you know coming on some blitz packages for dean Pease, putting him in in the game for that um also darren hall right darren hall comes out casey hayward had to go out for a minute um darren hall comes in get beat on the play but didn't give up the, the, the um peanut till me punch things like that that's in big plays like that never stop that's the fight i'm talking about so the young guys making plays that's what you want to see and then once again another young guy michael walker making a play not as young as the other guys but definitely could be somebody for the future you know get, getting that turnover like i said this defense looked like it couldn't stop anything but if, if you think about it these guys didn't didn't score with three points um late in the game so the, the, the falcons hold up well in that second half you have to take take your head off to those guys for that like i said the fight was big and those young guys played, played well all right let's look at some of the things that um maybe we probably need to work on all right um first of all i would like to say the red zone red zone 50 percent from the red zone we have to start scoring more in the red zone um archer smith was really known for his his abilities to actually you know scheme up scoring drives and when he once he got in the red zone he was tennessee titans however since he's been the atlanta falcons that has not been the case um he had a little quarter one quarterback last year got a whole different quarterback this year so i'm still probably trying to learn the guys and things like that got a whole new receiving core i understand but you got to start calling up plays um that's one of the things that's that's really killing us we got to be able to be more efficient in the red zone also on third down third down is is, is critical we was three of ten yesterday from third down um, from offensive standpoint we got to be able to capitalize on third downs as well those things will help, definitely help um us win and close out these these games we're close last year remember we was we had won like seven games in in one score games this year we actually zero and two in one score game so we know how that pans out sometimes this lead is that close one score games is the trend it's good um test for the falcons to actually go out against uh a tough New Orleans Aints defense and then come right back and go against the Super Bowl champs. Um, yes, we're 0-2, but they showed their fight in both of those games. But the third down conversion is definitely something that we need to be, be looking at and be considered for. And then the last thing, um, I'm going to say it again, you got to get Kyle Pitts involved in this offense. Um, I understand it's just the second game of the season, but when you got a weapon like Kyle Pitts, I think when they utilize him on the outside more, I think that's where you're going to find most of your mismatch. If he's playing tight end, I think it's 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 easier for defenses to, to kind of bracket him and things like that. Yes, he's going to play tight end. I understand that. It kind of the schemes. But when you're trying to identify and find those mismatches, I can see um, Kyle Pitts lined up out on, out on the outside. And that it definitely help a little bit more if you're going to do that. So that's one of the things that um, I know Arthur Smith is looking at that. He's not just on purpose, not trying to get Kyle Pitts involved in the game. But um, if you look at the, look at the numbers, Kyle Pitts is, is more involved in the game. The Atlanta Falcon winning percentage is better. So that's just simple math. You can look at that. 
And it's going to be that way because he's a, a huge weapon for this team. And if he's more involved in the game from a, a pass catcher stand, standpoint, it's definitely going to help us. So, I, like I said, it's just only two games. But I think Arthur Smith definitely got to try to get um, Kyle Pitts more involved. I don't know if it's the quarterback or it's a play calling. But either way it goes, that Kyle Pitts has to be more involved in, it, in, the, um, in the offensive game plan. You know... More other guys are making plays, so it's not like nobody's making plays. Cordell Hodge went, looked, looked pretty good yesterday. Alum um, Days of Kids look good. Of course, Drake London looked good. So I'm just saying, if you're going to have a total offense, you have to be able to utilize Unicorn that you drafted number four overall. Um, that's just simple math to me if they're able to get Kyle Pitts involved in the game. And then the last thing I want to say about us. Um, from yesterday's game is the miscues, the mistakes. We have to stop making the mistakes. Um, those things capitalize. You know, one mistake on top of another mistake on the mixed field goal. The, um, getting an interception and going down the field and giving it right back, right? Um, those kind of things. It, it's We have to be able to limit those mistakes. Penalty in, on, on the um, in the red zone. Those are the things that kill drives. Those are the things that stop your momentum. So all those things that we got to definitely try to do better in and, and limit those mistakes because a lot look like they're coming in key moments in the game, like I said, in the red zone on third downs and things like that. That was a that interception that came off Cardell Patterson's hand was huge because, remember, that was going into the half. We had just stopped them from scoring. It was 14-3. to um, We go down there, even we put six points, we go going to have maybe 6-14 instead of 21-3. to So that's one the kind of mistakes I'm talking about. We have to limit those mistakes. And if we do that, you know, things like that, we can actually start to maybe pull out some of these games. So, that's it with that game. But what I really want to see, you see up on the screen, I say trust the process. And that's what we got to do. I see a lot of teams, a lot of me, a lot of fans right now already um, down on the team. Um, it's kind of interesting because I don't think, I thought most of you fans didn't think we was going to be good anyway. But here we are, right? We're 0-2. Um, a lot like, probably like a lot of you probably thought anyway and a lot of course the media all thought we was going to be owing too so it's interesting to see calling out all you know the mistakes and things because in reality we could be two and oh just as easy we could have been owing too because to your point we just named up some of the mistakes and some of the things that we're not we're not doing towards the end of games and causing us to lose these games so it's not the blowout that everybody's thinking about it's just the miscues the the lack of experience from a young team, um, you know, situational football things that's just not happening the way it should happen, right? So if you're looking at it from that standpoint, you have to like the process that's happening. This team is getting better. Um, I know you guys don't want to see that, but it really is. It's, it's getting better time and time again. You just look at look at how this team is progressing from week one to week two. Um, it looked like I can admit from, you know, it looked like they was kind of going backwards looking in that first half. But the way these guys fought yesterday after being down by that big number just shows that this team really have the, the belief that they can win each game they're in. And that's what you want to see. We have to go back and look, guys. This this just started off last year. Our Smith, Terry Fontenot coming in with the salary cap. I know you guys already know this. We understand that the salary cap – bringing all these guys in on one-year deals, right? Um, this year, get rid of our franchise quarterback, bringing in a quarterback who haven't who haven't played for two years, getting him the system, getting him in rhythm, understanding how what it's going to take for him to make the perfect plays he need to make. These are the things that's ha actually happening with this team. And if you and if you look at that, you can see the process, right? We might not be we might not win that many games this year. I still think we can. I still think um, by week four, we could be possibly be two and two. We just have to see how it pans out. But if you just look at the growth week in and week out and see what these, these guys are doing, I think we can actually 
get to where we want to be. All right. Um, look at the growth. Look at the growth in, in these young guys. I keep talking about the young guys because this is a young team. These are guys of the future. Don't look at guys that that being on third and fourth teams and stuff like that because these guys might not, might, might not even be here next year. But these young guys, um, they're here. They're trying to get it in, get the rhythm down. And then once we build this culture the way we want to build it, I think this team is going to be have a bright future. That's what that's what you guys should see. Hopefully you see that. And if, if we start to, um, to, to see this progress, I think the win is going to start to come. I really do, guys. Um, Marcus Mariota is looking like that bridge quarterback. That's what we want. We, we, with the mistakes we're making, um, I don't think we want a rookie quarterback out there right now. So we want that bridge quarterback to be out there. So, guys, that's all I have. Let me know what you think about this process. That you know, let me know what you think about our good things and our bad things. And this all I have. This is your boy Rakundo. Come back at you with another video. Peace.